Playing with particles is always a good time, but it can be a little bit difficult to break up the uniformity and make it look a little less CG. What I'm talking about here is in this scene, for example, you have these areas of the simulation that are very uniform, very straight lines right here. And you can also see when each particle was emitted. So each individual line here is a different sub-step of the emission, which just kind of looks a little bit bad and not what we're looking for. So I have this scene set up here, just set up for Redshift to be rendered. And let me show you what this looks like just by default. So this is just the simulation as is. You obviously see every point is being emitted from the different um, areas and it's super easy to tell and just kind of looks just nice and straight and uniform. Doesn't really look all that great. So let's show you how to break it up and add a little bit of randomness and all it's gonna take is one simple node. So we'll do an attribute noise. We'll go ahead and wire this on in. And by default, it's gonna be set up to use the color channel, which is not what we want. We wanna change this color to a P, capital P for position. And our particles disappear, that's because they go way off up here because everything is super strewn out right now and this amplitude is way too high. So let's drop this down to like 0.02 and that's gonna bring us way closer to what we're looking for. Now this element size is way too high as is too. You see it's just kind of shifting the whole animation. So if we bring this down, it starts to break it up a little bit more. We need to bring this down to like 0.55 maybe. And you can see that we got a little bit of break up here. And that's kind of what we're looking for is just to kind of break up these shapes, but keep the overall shape the same. Now, obviously you can just play with this and change the overall shape as well. It runs post simulation, so that's nice as well. I'm also gonna come into this fractal and we're gonna change around this lacunarity a little bit. We bring this up and this is just gonna add a little bit more randomness into our simulation here. So maybe we'll set it to like 3.9 and that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and bring our render view back over and take a look at what this looks like. So this is a pretty heavy scene, so it is gonna take a minute to populate into our render view here. It's about five million particles, I think, five to 10 million, something like that. So once this loads on in, you can see it does shift our particle simulation a little bit, but we see a lot of breakup going on in these straight lines, which is pretty good. But we can take this just a little bit further and just do this one more time. We'll just alt click and drag that node, make sure it's wired on up. And I'm gonna drop down the element size here to like 0.03. And you know what, that looks pretty decent I think. So let's bring our render view back over. Let's take a look at this with this new attribute noise applied to it. Give it a second to populate in. And we'll get this break up just a little bit more. You can see the overall shape has pretty much stayed the same. We've just added a little bit more randomness into the simulation here. Let's go ahead and look at our camera. We'll go ahead and just move on in here. You can see that we no longer have these super straight lines. It's looking a lot better in my opinion than it did before. And that's a super simple way to just add a little bit of randomness in there. So let's go ahead. We'll, I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of this. I'll pause it so we don't crash. I will go back to our first one and we'll take a look at the individual different uh, kind of steps that we took and see where we started from and where we got to. Just a little before and after here. Back to cam one. Actually, I think I messed up there. We'll go ahead and take a screenshot of this as well. So I was more zoomed in. Let's go ahead and pause this again. Go back to our initial. And we'll go ahead and start this back up. Oh, I forgot to lock our camera, that's why. Oh well. 
go ahead and do that one more time for our last. Once this populates in, take our screenshot again, pause it one more time. Let's go back to our final result. Start this back up. Give it just a moment here to populate and we'll take a look at where we started at and where we made it to. Now, obviously, I'm just taking a look at the different ways to, to move around the particles. I'm not looking at the actual texturing process here. That is a little bit different. But let's take a look at our initial simulation here. So we got this initial simulation, which, like I said, straight lines, not looking too hot. Let me go ahead and just full screen this, actually. So initial, uh, initial sim, real straight, not looking too hot. We add a little bit of noise, breaks it up just a little bit. Still, the overall shape is the same, but you can tell that it's broken up quite a bit here. And then with our last one, which I believe was this one, you can see that we've maintained that overall shape, but we've completely gotten rid of all of those straight lines. Got a little bit more of this randomness going on. Now, you may not like this you know, exact setup for this specific scene, but you can kind of play with it and get your desired results. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. It's something that I started to use in all my particle simulations that I've been doing recently, just for my own personal pleasure. And I've been enjoying the results that it's given. And like I said, we can actually go back in here. Let's go back to our first one and we can really crank this up as well. So if we want to go over to this amplitude, kind of turns it into a little ball here, but if we bring up the element size, we can get some really cool results with this as well. And we're just going to go ahead and drop a transform back in here. And let's go ahead, just move this a little bit more into our lights, go back to our camera, bring this back down. Let's bring up our render view again. And let's just take a look at what some really extreme results will give us because you can really play around with the different shapes in post after you've already simulated. So if maybe you decide later on that you don't like the overall shape that you got, you can get these really cool abstract shapes going on. That's actually pretty, pretty cool. I like the different kind of waves that are going on in here. And obviously you can play with the different noises as well and get some cool different designs for that as well. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out, gave you a little bit of an insight into how to adjust the little sub-stepping that you will see so that you don't make it so apparent that that is there. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I got a bunch of other videos on my channel that have to do with Houdini, some on Clarice, uh, some stuff with Redshift and some of 4D as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check that out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.